This is a tutorial on how to get started with MATLAB. This is the opening window of MATLAB, which gives us tabs across the top, various commands and various windows. We'll start by looking at the command window. We can enter commands directly in the command window, like 5 times 6, which is equal to 30, 7 divided by 8, which is equal to 0.8750. We can also issue commands like sine of pi, which is basically zero. We can also define arrays. We could say an array x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or we can use one of the inbuilt commands to define our arrays. To find what is inbuilt, we can type the help command, and as you can see, there are plenty of topics in the help file. The command I want help on is called lin space. Lin space gives us a linearly spaced vector starting at x1, finishing at x2, and with n data points. So if I say that x is equal to lin space 0 to pi, and I'll have, let's say, 40 values, now I've got a vector called x, which has got 40 values from 0 to pi. I can now say y is equal to the cos of x, and MATLAB has created a vector called y, which has got 40 values, giving me the cosine of x from 0 to pi. So I can now plot x and y, and I get the cosine from 0 to pi. Now imagine I wanted the cosine from 0 to 2 pi. By pressing the up arrow, I can go back to the, the lin space command. And instead of pi, I can now say 2 pi. Now I can press the up arrow to get back to the y command to recalculate the y vector, and then I can replot the graph to get the graph from 0 to 2 pi. The next thing I want to do is to write a script, which, as far as I'm concerned, is when MATLAB becomes really powerful. So I'm going to say new script, and now I can add a script. The script I'm going to write is based loosely on the Saturn V rocket. The Saturn V is the rocket that took the Americans to the moon, and it's the biggest rocket that mankind has ever built. So we'll start by giving the main parameters for the rocket. I've defined the parameters in a block, and this will be at the top of the file, so anybody editing this file later will be able to see at a glance that this is the data. We have the mass of the rocket, which is in kilograms. We have the mass of fuel, which is in kilograms. We have the thrust of the five rocket engines, which is in newtons. And we have the burn rate of 13,000 kilograms a second, or 13 tonnes per second. The next thing I'm going to do is to define the variables I need to do the calculations. Flight time is a vector that goes from 0 to 200, and it's initialized with zeros. Distance is a vector of the same size, also all full of zeros. We've defined a variable called remaining fuel, which we've set equal to the mass of fuel at the beginning, and we've set the time t to zero. The next thing I want to do is to do the main block of the calculation. We're going to have a loop that says while we have fuel remaining, we're going to record the time in the time vector as the current time, Remembering Newton's second equation, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. We have the force, which is the thrust. We're going to divide by the mass, and that's going to give us the acceleration. And therefore, we can calculate the distance, which is going to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. The initial velocity is zero, so the distance is half at squared, which is a half at squared. Once these data have been recorded, we're going to increment the time, and then we're going to decrement the amount of fuel we've got left. And this continues until we run out of fuel. The final thing I want to do is to plot our trajectory. 
So I'm going to save our file. And then I'm going to run it. And there we have a plot of the time versus distance. The rocket has flown for about 150 seconds and we've done a little bit less than 14 times 10 to the 4. That's 140,000 metres in 150 seconds. Or to put that another way, that's 140 kilometres in two and a half minutes. So you'd certainly know if you'd done that journey. Going back to our main loop, what we've said here is that the acceleration is equal to the thrust divided by the mass. We haven't adjusted the mass as we burn the fuel, but if you look at the top, we're burning 13 tonnes of fuel a second, which is not insignificant. So we're going to change this calculation by replacing the fuel mass with the remaining fuel. Then we're going to save the file and then run it again. This time in the 150 seconds we've done nearly 400,000 metres, which is a significant change from the previous calculation. It will be helpful to see both the traces on the same graph, so let's do that. We're going to rerun the first calculation, which is the 140 kilometer journey, and then we're going to type the command hold on, and that will hold the values of the graph. And now we can see the difference of the two plots. This is the 1.4 times 10 to the 4, and this is the well, 3.8 times 10 to the 5. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. That completes this first simple model of the Saturn V rocket.